Live, local, and late breaking. This is GCHS TV News, live from Greenup County High School. Good afternoon. This is GCHS TV News. I'm Emily Maynard. And I'm Ethan Huff. We begin with today's top story. Russian forces have started to pull back from the Ukraine based nuclear power plant. Ukraine's state-owned nuclear power company says Russian forces have begun leaving the damaged Chernobyl nuclear power plant. The operator says the exit comes after soldiers got significant doses of radiation from digging trenches at the highly contaminated site. The move came as fighting continued near Kiev and other zones. There are indications that the Kremlin is using talks of de-escalation as cover while regrouping and resupplying its forces and redeploying them for a stepped-up offensive in eastern Ukraine. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky says defense forces are preparing for a stepped-up Russian offensive in eastern Ukraine. President Joe Biden is ordering the release of one million barrels of oil per day from the nation's strategic petroleum reserve for six months in a bid to control energy prices. Those prices have spiked as the U.S. and allies have imposed steep sanctions on Russia over its invasion of Ukraine. The White House says Biden will make the formal announcement later Thursday in remarks on his administration's plans to combat rising gas prices. The White House says Biden will also call on Congress to impose financial penalties on oil and gas companies that lease public lands but aren't producing energy. Severe storms packing isolated tornadoes and high winds are racing across the Deep South, killing two in the Florida Panhandle and leaving scattered damage to buildings and homes in their paths. In Florida, the Washington County Sheriff's Office say two were killed and two were injured when a tornado touched down there. The storm front spans several states and has been blamed for spinning off at least two confirmed tornadoes earlier Wednesday that left injuries elsewhere. High winds overturned semi-trailers in Louisiana, toppled large trees in Mississippi, and damaged a hotel in downtown Nashville. Senate lawmakers in Mississippi briefly suspended work when weather sirens blared during a tornado warning Wednesday. Checking in on Kentucky news, legislation to tighten rules for public assistance has won final passage in the Kentucky legislature. The bill revamping Kentucky's public benefit system cleared the House and Senate Wednesday. Opponents say changes to the bill ease some of the restrictions. The votes came as lawmakers rushed to finish work on priority bills before an extended break. By passing the public benefits bef bill before the veto period break begins, supporters retain their override power if Democratic Governor Andy Brashear vetoes the, me the measure. The Republican-led legislature will return to the State House in mid-April to finish its work for the 60-day session. Kentucky lawmakers have wrapped up work on the state's next two-year budget. The plan increases spending on education and delivers big pay raises for state employees. The measure won Senate and House passage Wednesday. The bill now goes to Democratic Governor Andy Beshear. The measure pumps money into renovating state parks. It supplies public pension systems with extra cash to help pay down unfunded liabilities. Lawmakers funded full-day kindergarten. The budget increases per-pupil funding state under the state's main funding formula for K-12 schools. State employees would receive a pay raise of at least 8% in the first year of the biennium. A northern Kentucky woman who pleaded guilty in the beating death of her one-year-old son has been sentenced to 35 years in prison. News outlets reported that the 32-year-old Stacy Shuchart of Dayton received a sentence Tuesday for the death of her son more than two years ago. Documents filed in Campbell County Circuit Court show Shuchart pleaded guilty in February to a single count of murder in the death of her one-year-old son, Sean Buttery Jr. The documents say an autopsy found the boy's death in 2019 was caused by homicidal violence. Kentucky lawmakers have passed legislation that appropriates an extra $15 million for Kentucky State University, on top of $23 million school officials requested to stabilize the school's finances. The bill also includes $1.5 million for Kentucky's Council on Post-Secondary Education, which is currently overseeing the university. The bill was altered in the Senate to include several changes that would affect how KSU operates. For instance, the bill now gives the KSU Board of Regents the opportunity to fire any employee, including tenured employees, upon a 30-day notice. KSU is Kentucky's only publicly historically black university. On to entertainment news. The pandemic delayed Expo 2020 in Dubai is closing. It's a come down from eight years of anticipation, over $7 billion in investment, 240 million hours of labor and six months of festivities. The fate of the fairgrounds is clear, with some pavilions dismantled and others rebranded for a new business, 
business district. But the deeper legacy of the event proves more elusive. In the end, the billions of dollars, frenzy of construction, and barrage of publicity proved powerless against the coronavirus, which battered global tourism. Concerns about the city's chronic debt and oversupply problems linger. Nonetheless, Dubai has bet on Expo to enhance its profile and boost its economy as it rebounds from the pandemic. Fox News Media says it's hired Caitlyn Jenner as a contributor. The failed Republican candidate for California governor was scheduled to make her first appearance as a Fox employee on Sean Hannity's primetime show Thursday night. And Fox says she will offer commentary across a variety of Fox platforms. An Olympic gold winner in 1976 in the Decathlon, Jenner came out as transgender and identifies as a female. Suzanne Scott, Fox News Media CEO, called Jenner a trailblazer who is, quote, an inspiration to us all, end quote. Jenner unsuccessfully sought the GOP nomination for California governor last year. Coming up, Caroline Atkins will take a look at our weather for the weekend, and Rachel Bush will catch you up on the latest sports news. That's when we return on GCHS TV News. Welcome back to GCHS TV News. I'm Ethan Huff. And I'm Emily Maynard. Let's join Caroline Atkins in our Weather Center for a look at what's in store for this week's weather. Taking a live look at Cy Green of County High School, we can see that it is a very cloudy, gloomy, dreary day and with the looks of very strong winds. Now, for tonight, it's going to be mostly cloudy and cold with spotty rain showers followed by snow squall below of 41 degrees. Friday night, Friday we have sunny and breezy, much cooler, high of 48, winds of 10 to 15 miles per hour. And Friday night it is going to be clear and cold with low of 30 degrees, winds for the whole day. Now, taking a look at the extended forecast, for Saturday through Tuesday, we have mostly cloudy days with highs of 66 and lows of 36. For GCHS TV weather, I'm Carolyn Atkins, and after the break, we'll be right back with sports from Rachel Bush.
The Kansas City Royals have exercised their club option on Mike Montagny for the 23 season. The move eliminates any uncertainty over whether their manager will remain with the club after the coming season. Montagny is entering his third season with the Royals, which includes the COVID-19 shortened 2020 season and his first 162 game run as the manager last season. He is 100 and 122 with Kansas City and 691 and 596 overall. That includes seven season as the manager of the Cross State St. Louis Cardinals. Notre Dame freshman guard Blake Wesley has announced he's entering the NBA draft. The 6'5", who averaged a team-leading 14.4 points for his hometown Fighting Irish, tweeted his intention on Wednesday. Wesley was an Indiana All-Star at Riley High School and Notre Dame first South Bend public school basketball prospect since 1985. He was the only freshman in the starting lineup dominated by seniors and grad students at Notre Dame, which finished with a 24-11 record. That included going 15-5 along with North Carolina as runners-up to the Atlantic Coast Conference regular season champion, Duke. The draft will be held June 23rd at the Barclays Center in New York. The United States has received a boost for the World Cup drawn and Canada has taken a hit in the updated FIFA rankings. The Americans will be in pot two after being ranked 15th in the world. They clinched a burp for this year's championship in Qatar despite a 2-0 loss to Costa Rica Wednesday on the final night of qualifying. Canada won the North American qualifying group and will play at the tournament for the first time in 36 years but missed a chance for a rankings boost by losing at Panama 1-0 to its, at its final qualifier. Canada will instead be among the lowest seeded teams in pot four. The eight groups for the tournament in Qatar will be drawn Friday from four pots. Qatar gets the top seeded slot given to the World Cup host nation, national despite being ranked number 51. That would do it for sports. More from GCHS TV in just a moment. Finally today on GCHS TV News. A tourist got a view that he hadn't planned on when a close encounter with an elk nearly turned deadly. While passing by Estes Park in Colorado, tourists found a large herd of elk that had made its way onto a the large grassy area is suitable for easy view of the beautiful animal. However, the tourists were not the only ones who were after an up-close view at, as this bull elk decided he wanted to have a closer look at the camera. <laughs> Fortunately, the person behind the camera was not injured and the elk continued on its way. I guess that is a real example of what happens when you mess with the bull. You get the horns. That will do it for GCHS TV News. Have a great afternoon, everyone.